नमस्कार वेलकम बैक टू द कोर्स ऑन ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल बिहेवियर इंडिविजुअल डायनामिक्स इन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टुडे वी मूव टू द लेक्चर फोर ऑफ मॉड्यूल सेवन इन द प्रीवियस क्लासेस वी लुक्ड इन टू वॉट आर द डिफरेंट एंशियंट और रिलेटिवली नॉन कंटेम्प्रेरी थियरीज इन टर्म्स ऑफ मोटिवेशन we have looked into what motivation is as a construct we have also delved deeper into what are the different antecedents that can trigger to motivation intrinsic as well as extrinsic today we look into the contemporary theories of motivation i'm dr abraham sirlaisak i'm assistant professor at the school of business indian institute of technology guwahati today's theme is if you have been able to do the job successfully in the past you are more confident you will be able to do it in the future many a time you think that you know this has been done already or i was successful enough i could do it very effectively in the past then it gives you an innate boost it gives you an innate motivation to work more stronger work more uh, clearer and effectively so this is the theme of today's lecture and we move to the contemporary theories the relevance of the contemporary theories of motivation lies in their ability to provide insights into human behavior and drive in various context it could include any different context in workplace like education healthcare uh, personal development etc so all these theories all these theories which are relatively contemporary in nature help us to understand what motivates a particular individual uh, their action and what enables them to make choices and persist in their efforts so if you are asking me something which is very relevant is the persistence so you cannot undermine what do you mean by let's say what motivates individual it could be the action it could be to make choices but the most important part of any motivation or most important aspect would be the persistence that individual gives or the individual has in the particular task many a time you see that the 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 motivation just faces out many a time you see that though the the whole whole proposition was started with certain extrinsic motivation like reward maybe monetary factors etc but at the middle level somewhere the motivation just fizzed out Mo motivation just vanished so there are situations like that so all these aspects of motivation comes down to a single factor which is known as persistence so all these theories that provide framework for understanding various aspects of motivation such as intrinsic and extrinsic motivation goal pursuit and the role of autonomy competence and relatedness in driving behavior so th these are some of the terms which i would like to introduce you when i come to self determination theory self determination theory sdt is a very very popular theory when it comes to motivation self determination it's a functional word self determination theory or sdt is a psychological framework and theory of motivation and personality development that was given by desi and ryan in 1980s now interestingly there are three elements three core elements which these two uh, people discuss in terms of self determination theory and the first one is autonomy now when you are looking into autonomy you must have heard about this word autonomy autonomy here means specifically the ability to make choices the availability of choices and the decision that is being made to take that particular choice and owning up the decision so there are certain parameters which are coming in terms of defining autonomy so autonomy is not a situation where you are freedom the freedom comes with certain choices you can make those choices and those choices the selection of the choices the decision of that selection is totally vested upon you and you are the person in charge of that particular decision and that is what autonomy specifies here another important element is competence when you are looking into the core competency what is what could be done there are certain parameters or certain factors which you are good at so that gives a boost in terms of your extraneous or continued performance 
So competence and the third one is relatedness. How effectively you are related to that particular event. Let us take an example of an organization conducting an event in terms of uh, let us say a particular activity. So you do not have a say in that particular activity, you do not know what that article activity is because of the sheer position you are you are delegated to be a part of that committee which decides on that activity unless and otherwise you do not have any say or any stake in that so there could be a, a bit of lack of motivation that is coming into that particular aspect so these are the three components autonomy competence and relatedness so, SDT, self-determination theory, distinguishes between different types of motivation like intrinsic, extrinsic and a motivation. Let us look into intrinsic, SDT distinguishes between different types of motivation, intrinsic, extrinsic and motivation which we have already discussed. Now, let us look into goal setting theory. In the late 1960s, Edwin Locke proposed that intentions to work towards a particular goal or set of goals are major sources of motivation, work motivation. Specifically, the relevance of objective, the relevance of motos, uh, goals, etc. came in after this goal setting theory. So, specific goals produced a higher level of output than generalized goal. Let us say you have a generalized goal of developing your career, progressing, uh, the particular uh, career of yours for the uh, in the next 10 to 15 years you would want you to see yourself from a manager if you are right now to let's say uh, dgm a gm or let's say an avp so this is the career progression you are planning now the thing is what motivates you is not only that but some specific goals on a day to day basis you want to complete the particular task you want to complete a particular project and let us say you gain some, uh, uh, some performance bonus or you gain a bit of uh, a good rapport with your boss so that the next promotion maybe manager to senior manager becomes easy. So that is more specific in terms of the tangibility so that is more motivating to you because that happens right now but on a long term there is no doubt that the extrinsic goal of taking or you having a set a goal to reach the position of AVP would make you reach there so if the factors such as acceptance of the goals are held constant let's assume the more difficult the goal is higher the level of performance this is this has been uh, clearly understood and this could be related to any of your any of your examples in the work setting let's look into situations where you have worked very hard let's take a case of a student who has worked very hard cracked a particular examination let us take for an, an ease of understanding civil service examination or NEET or let's say je etc so they have cracked and they value that that particular seat or that particular job or that particular uh, rank position because they have worked very hard for that. So harder you work, harder the efforts or more the efforts you are putting in, greater will be the recognition of the value or greater will be your performance, no doubt about it. So people do better when they get feedback on how well they are progressing towards a particular goal. Let us say your manager, you are, uh, you are progressing in a very uh, rapid manner. Your pace is very high. But the manager is not so happy with your progression and also with the pace of your progression. These are two different things if you understand. One is some managers might be okay with the progression you are making but some might not be happy with the pace of the progression you are making. So that would be higher than what they expected or lower than they expected. So either ways it could be uh, against their set agenda or set ideas. So let us look into uh, the positive side of it. If the manager motivates you, yes, you are on the right track, you are, you are working well towards the task, your deadline was let us say 20th and this is just 10th of the month and you are almost done, you have completed 90% of the particular task, then it gives you a boost, it gives you a motivation and this is specifically what goal setting theory talks all about. Goal setting theory assumes an individual is committed to the goal and determined not to abandon it. 
This is the beauty of goal setting theory. Setting specific, difficult, individual goals may have different effects in different culture. For example, in some cultures, some goals might be trivial. You know, case in point, like let's look into, uh, let's say, a very individualistic goal. Let's say to progress yourself as uh, from, uh, let's say, manager to senior manager in a Japanese culture. So there it's more of the organizational culture, the collectivistic scenario where the company comes first, individual takes the backseat, the organization comes first. So in such a scenario, you might not be in tandem with the company policy and with respect to the organizational culture. So even if you are setting a specific goal, even if you are setting a, a specific target for yourself, you might not be performing in a better or in, in the best possible manner. So these are some of the aspects of goal setting theory and when you look into performance management applications techniques associated with goal setting you will see that mainly the present day literature talks about two aspects one is learning goal orientation and second is performance goal orientation so when you are looking into relationships in in terms of organizational interpersonal relationship there could be two aspects one is how effectively you are mingling with your fellow uh, workers or your co-employees is it in terms of the learning goal orientation or performance goal orientation many many uh, research studies have not happening in this particular area sometimes learning goal orientation is also known as mastery climate and sometimes performance goal orientation is known as performance climate so what is your organization is it boosting your learning orientation is it more of a mastery climate that you are working in introspect within yourself are you in a performance oriented climate more the performance better you are valued better you are judged and better you are making the progress is that the case in your organization or is it that the learning is important you are too trained you are groomed to a higher calling within the organization is that the case so when you are looking into goal setting theories these are the different aspects now let's look into another very important theory and very interesting theory which is self-efficacy theory Self-efficacy, if you know, it refers to an individual's belief that he or she is capable of performing a task. It is as simple as this. In difficult situations, let's say people with low self-efficacy are more likely to lessen their effort or give up altogether, while those with very high self-efficacy will try harder to master the particular challenge or to master the particular task. Now, self-efficacy is, is the innate understanding that I can do it. This is self-efficacy, nothing more than that. Changes in self-efficacy over time are related to changes in the creative performance as well. And this is research-based. So many a time, what all statements or what all conjectures I'm making is specifically a research outcome. So that's why in, if you have gone through the initial set of classes, you'll see that I am trying to mix the research current research also into the content of the course so that it becomes interesting it becomes relevant and it becomes all the more critical in the present day scenario so let's look into how self-efficacy can be increased that's the way that's the whole process of uh, the entire theory that has come up and that's a that's a re very basic reason why you are attending this course let's look into uh, how self-efficacy can, can be increased and more than the academic curiosity I want you to uh, imbibe this and try to work out this in your organizational setting so that you will have a higher self-efficacy sooner than later so the first and the critical important aspect here is inactive mastery inactive mastery inactive mastery is something like if you are getting small increments of success, you will tend to get a confidence to do the best. Let's look into uh, situations like, let's say, small kids, they go to a primary class, maybe a drawing class, not the regular academy class. Then uh, the moment they are into the drawing or the painting class, the drawing teacher uh, will not teach them to, let's say, draw a bird or uh, let's uh, think to draw an animal like that. They will give you, if you, have, if you have observed closely, 
and self-efficacy essentially comes from observational learning and uh, you know, thanks to uh, all the observational learning psychologists like Albert Bandura, etc. for this. If you look into the, the painting classes specifically, the drawing classes specifically, you will see that he or she, the teacher will give them a particular letter. Let's say 5 or let's say uh, B or P. With that particular letter, you keep on building some extra lines and finally you carve out a bird out of that. So what essentially happens is, the moment you are building something from a, a very trivial thing which you already know and it turns out to be a success, you get that motivation and it boosts your self-efficacy and you feel that you can successfully do this and that's how you you get to the next task and the next and the next likewise. So this is what inactive mastery is. You are given small positive reinforcements. Yes, you can do it. This is something which you get and this motivation or this motivates you to achieve much better and harder targets in the future. The second important aspect is vicarious modeling. Vicarious modeling is interesting because here you are trying to model somebody. Let's, let's look into some situation. It is, let's say, you are trying to replicate some activity of a particular uh, person. And uh, the theory states that if the person is more similar to you, it is that your self-efficacy can be increased more rapidly and more effectively. Let's take an example. Uh, if you follow cricket, you, want, you would want to make a, a cover drive or let's say a pull shot. So you tend to see you're playing cricket and you tend to see your friend, your best friend, who is not that skilled but is at par with you in terms of the skill and the talent in the game. So he is making a classic cover drive. Now you tend to get the feel that if he can do it, if she can do it, I too can do it. So this is vicarious modeling. I'll take this case to an extreme point. Let's say you are a golf player and you try to see a, a shot by Tiger Woods. Now, he doing it and one of your friend doing it is totally different. Vicarious modeling would not be that effective if Tiger Woods is doing it and you, you think that you can emulate that. Similarly, you, a classic cover drive by, let's say, Virat Kohli, and you are trying to say that you can do it might not be specifically boosting your self-efficacy. It is vicarious modeling, no doubt about it, but it might not be specifically boosting your self-efficacy when compared to the similar situation where your friend, who is equal to you in terms of the talent and skill and abilities in the game, is doing the same thing. This could be seen in, in, in your office setup, in your organizational setup. You must see, you must have observed that, okay, this guy is doing it like this or this girl is doing it like this. Then it's, sim it's a simple task. So many a time it could be coding activity, it could be a data analysis a sheet which you are working on, anything. It is called as vicarious modeling. The third important aspect is verbal persuasion. Now, verbal persuasion is something which your boss can do to you. He or she can always cheer up and motivate. Yes, this is the way to do it. Yes, you are almost there. Your task is almost done. This is the right way. You have, you have a, a well, a good start that you have made. So all these words of motivation, all these verbal persuasions are indeed trying to affect or increase your self-efficacy. And the fourth important aspect is arousal. Arousal is a state of enlightenment or a state of increased activity. It is not like say you are dull, you are sitting very depressed in, in one corner of your office and your boss is telling you to do a particular task. Then the self-efficacy is already down because you are not in that aroused state. In arousal, you will be actually in a different state of mind where whatever be the task, come the task, 
let let is let it be the toughest job in the organization i can do it or i will prove that i can do it that would be the case of a higher arousal and that would in fact lead to a high self efficacy so these were some of the clear aspects that lead you to higher self efficacy now let's look into another important theory reinforcement theory reinforcement theory of motivation is also known as reinforcement learning theory it's like a reward theory in psychological concept that explains how behavior is influenced and motivated by consequences you are doing something you are doing something what is the net output of that how it is perceived in the society how it is perceived in the organization in the first place how your boss is perceiving that what are the results whether it is success whether it is a failure whether it has increased the sales revenue of the organization whether it has taken on the cost of the organization whether it has been persistent loss all these things motivate or demotivate as the case may be to enact the action further so reinforcement theory is a behavioristic aspect in in the initial classes i have taken you through the behavioristic approach everything is external it works according to the stimulus response there are no internal factors it is more of uh, somebody rewarding you and you are tending uh, you tend to do that job if somebody is punishing you you refrain from doing that particular job so this is more of a behavioristic view arguing that reinforcement specifically conditions the behavior so key components of the reinforcement theory would be behavior as such the sr stimulus and response the relationships uh, that are happening with respect to the stimulus and response how how the response is coming up and finally the consequences to the particular stimulus so these were some of the relevant theories in 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 contemporary aspect that i had to discuss in this particular class remember that you are a person who would be motivated externally and internally we have already discussed extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation but when you look into things like self efficacy it is more of intrinsic motivation there are different aspects like vicarious modeling like arousal like verbal persuasion like inactive mastery which you can employ within the organization to build greater self efficacy and greater self efficacy mark my words any individual with lesser self efficacy has not survived the race in organization any individual who has higher self efficacy has the constant uh, motivation to do work which others might not be able to or might not even think to do so this distincts or this distinguishes the individual from the lot this makes you stand apart in the organization so that's all from today's class take care see you in the next class bye bye